Spending 300 hours studying doesn't mean that you're going to pass. Doing 700 or more practice problems doesn't mean that you're ready. Reaching a certain competency level doesn't mean that you're going to be successful. It all boils down to how well you do on mock exams. And based on my eight years of helping aspiring actuaries to pass their exams, I believe that there's no better way to measure it. So what's the real score that tells you you're actually ready and not just getting lucky? How do you simulate exams strategically so that you get a true measurement? Should you reschedule your exam if your assessment deems you're not ready? Well, that's all coming up. By the way, you can't just jump into mock exams. Speed is a big factor here, which I'm definitely going to get to. But if you haven't done the prerequisite work leading up to the mock exams, then you're probably going to get discouraged really quickly and you're most definitely going to fail them. Maybe we shouldn't really think of it as failing. Let's think of it like data collection. That's what a real actuary would do. So what should you do first then? Well, the study strategy that I recommend in our Actuary Accelerator community, which by the way has worked for hundreds of future actuaries, is called the LBS strategy or the learn, do, simulate strategy. So this is how it works. In the learn phase, you go through your study materials. In the do phase, you do blocks of randomized practice problems and you're aiming to get about 70% of them right. You won't get that many right from the beginning, but it's your ultimate goal. Then you move on to the simulate phase and that's where we're going to be focusing our attention on today because this is when you start doing mock exams and this is also where you can really start to to assess if you're ready to take the exam or not. So why do mock exams? Well, if you have done your studying properly up until this point, then mock exams is really all about increasing your speed and also working on getting over those mental hurdles that often waste a lot of time on exam day. One of the biggest differences between college exams and studying for those versus actuarial exams is the speed that you have to answer the questions. So you're not ready for the exam until you can accurately answer questions with speed. For exam P and FM, you actually only have six minutes on average to answer each question. That's right, you only have six minutes to solve, panic, doubt yourself, erase everything, crumple up your paper, and start over again. So I'll share what I really mean when I say take a mock exam or do a mock exam in just a few minutes, but first, I want to go into how you actually assess yourself while you're doing these mock exams. So basically when you do them, you want to be aiming for a score of 80% or higher on average over the past three to five most recent exams that you've done. And these exams should be SOA level difficulty. So for example, if these were the most recent five scores that you had on your mock exams, then the average is 77%. So you're getting close to ready, but maybe an extra week or two will really push you into that definitely ready status. So take note that on exam day, you actually don't need to get 80% or higher in order to pass the exam. For the past many years, the exam P pass score has been an average of 71%. And for exam FM, it's right around there too. That one has actually fluctuated just a tad, but it remains right now more recently at 71% as well. However, we do know that for most people, exam day is going to be different. The exam environment is different. Those nerves are gonna creep in. There's maybe some anxiety. So I'll definitely share some ways to help you perform your best despite those exam day jitters in a few minutes. But it's because of that that we are actually aiming for quite a bit higher than you're actually gonna need on exam day. Okay, so I have a very specific idea of what I mean when I say doing mock exams. However, no matter how many exams you do, it can be really, really difficult to simulate that feeling, those internal feelings of anxiousness, nervousness, and pressure of the real exam. So if you can practice that beforehand, it can be so beneficial. So how do you do that? Well, I will share some ways to help simulate that, but first I want you to know that these methods are not designed to help eliminate that. It's going to happen no matter what. These are designed to help you still perform well despite the pressure because hopefully you get some chances to practice performing well under pressure. Oh, and by the way, if you have found this video helpful so far, could you please give it a thumbs up 
to let me know, and also so that I can spread to more aspiring actuaries. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So my first suggestion is to do your mock exams in a variety of different locations because this helps you get more comfortable performing well in places that aren't very familiar to you. So for members of our Actuary Accelerator community, they've stated that they have found things like the library to be helpful, especially because there's still some background noise of other people talking, and that does tend to happen sometimes on exam day. Another place to go is possibly a cafe, or you may be able to book a meeting room, for example, at the place that you currently work if you're in an office environment. The second suggestion is to do mental reset drills, and these are something that I'm currently working on adding into our Actuary Accelerator community, they hopefully will be all available by the time this video goes out. But basically, this is sets of problems that are designed to help you recover mentally when a question goes wrong. So on exam day, sometimes one bad question can really throw you for a loop and set you back, but you need to practice that mental recovery. Just letting go of those things and starting the next question with a clear mind. Drills can help you practice that. The third suggestion is public accountability. If you are a member of the AAC, go into our WhatsApp group, or if you know other future actuaries, tell them that you're taking an exam or even just a friend, a family member. Tell them that you're going to take the exam and that after you take it, you're going to tell them the score you get. So maybe they don't really care, but it does put that extra pressure on you to perform well because you want to give them a good score. I'm also going to put a few other suggestions right down below in the description. You wanna know the best way to get over exam day nerves? Try finishing a mock exam before your cat comes in, takes over your desk and gets fur everywhere. So if you don't achieve that 80% average on your previous mock exams, does that mean that you're going to fail? Should you delay your exam and reschedule it so that you have more time to prepare? Honestly, the practice problems available for exam P and FM are very similar to the types of problems that you're going to see on the exam. So it's a really good estimate of what to expect and mock exams are really good indicators of whether you're ready. So if you are getting close to that average 71%, of what you probably need to achieve on exam day, well, then there's really no harm in just going for it. Most employers don't really care how many times it took you to pass an exam as long as you eventually passed it. So as far as I can see, the only real harm is maybe if money is a concern with you or if you feel like you might really, really, really be discouraged if you end up with a failing result on exam day. On that note, I failed my first actuarial exam two times before I finally passed it on the third attempt. The reason, well, I made a lot of study mistakes. These are things that I could have avoided if only I had known. Maybe I could have been on the good side of that 50% pass rate. Anyway, if you wanna know what I did wrong so that you don't make the same mistakes while you're studying for your exam, then make sure you go watch this video next. I'll also link it down below in the description.